to me, it's less about technology than about money. I think that people fell in love with money about 30 years ago. And there was a lot more money. I mean, that's what everyone forgets. There was also, it was, they didn't just fall in love with it because they were weak or wicked, or indeed they didn't fall in love with it, period, because they were weak or wicked, indeed. I don't think people are, just as I don't think people are any smarter today than they were 200 years ago, I don't think they're any more vile today than they were 200 years ago. So, but what I think happened was the potential for lots of people to make money doing things that in the past you couldn't make money doing was profoundly corrupting. And so if you like a kind of Hollywoodization of spirit took place so that people wanted to do things that were money making. My mother liked living well, but her idea wasn't to, that, that what she would do would make a lot of money. And there were even economic, you know, when people of my mother's generation came to New York, say in the 50s, the end of the 50s in her case, but this was true from the 1920s through the end of the 1970s, I think. Um, you could live honorably. That is to say, you could have your own apartment. It was a decent apartment in a decent neighborhood for not a lot of money. You know, since the 1980s, in order to live in a great city like New York or London or Paris or L.A., you pretty much have to have quite a lot of money. Otherwise, you're living three in an apartment uh, in, or in a really terrible neighborhood. And, and so once you got that situation, once, it, once a dignified life on relatively small amounts of money became impossible and the possibility existed to make money if you joined the kind of nexus of advertising and the media, the commercial media, well then, it's hardly humanly surprising that people went in that direction. See, I think those issues, maybe that's just the vulgar materialist in me, but I think those issues are much more critical, crucial, pardon me, to what happened over the last 30 years than some sort of, you know, shift in the zeitgeist due to, I don't know, you know, people's characters or whatever. I mean, I, that strikes me as... As, as more essential. Also money, you know, this silly season of Wall Street, which we've now, which has now ended. George Soros said in an interview the other day uh, in I think the Times of London that, you know, we're never going back to the world of the last 25 years. It's not, I mean, of course, there'll be an end to this recession or depression or whatever we want to call it. But the idea that you know, we're going back to a world where markets only went up, where people, you know, seem to have more disposable income every year, where credit was promiscuously granted and promiscuously used. That's over, he said. And I, you know, that means that culture where someone who does video art or writes novels can seriously imagine that she, he, she or he will also have the income of a what we used to call a very rich person, what now would just be called the middle class person. That's finished. That's over. So I don't know. I'm not so sure that my mother's way of being may not be more emblematic of the future than it was maybe of the last part of her own life. Mm -hmm.